Welcome back friends. As we know, Amazon S3 is one of the core AWS services and Bucket is one of the main components of the S3 service. That being said, it is critical to have a solid understanding of S3 buckets and its related concepts. Okay. In this video, we will learn how to create an S3 bucket and upload objects to an S3 bucket. In addition, we will look into many related S3 concepts and in the end, we will look into the pre-signing of the S3 URLs, which helps share private objects on S3. A pre-signed URL uses security credentials to grant time-limited permission to download objects. With that intro, let's start. Okay? Here I am on the Amazon S3 console, and the first thing I will do is create a bucket, because this is where data will be stored. I'll click on Create Bucket. Okay, the bucket has to have a name. Let me give test as a bucket name. Okay, let me scroll down and let me click on create bucket. If you notice, I'm getting this message. Bucket with the same name already exists. I'm getting this message because someone else created an S3 bucket named test, right? Even though in this S3 account, I have never created a bucket named test. The S3 service is not allowing me to create a bucket named test. For example, if I click on buckets, right? As you can see, there are no buckets in my account, right? If I come here again, say, create a bucket. And click on this one, create bucket, right? I'm getting this message, bucket with the same name already exists, right? Since somebody has already taken the name test, I cannot create the bucket with the name test. A bucket with the same name already exists. I'm getting this message. So when you enter a bucket name, it should not be taken before, right? It should be unique. That's, that's the whole point. Next, the question is, how can you get the uniqueness? Well, using domain names when creating buckets is usually good practice. When you have a domain name somewhere in the prefix or suffix in bucket names, then there is a high likelihood that you will get uniqueness. The key point is that the bucket name must be unique, right? Let me enter the name of this bucket by including the domain name. That way I will get the uniqueness. The next thing you notice here is that the bucket name scope is global, right? All these regions are disabled. You can see that all these regions are disabled, right? Because the bucket name scope is global. Another important point is that although bucket's name is global, buckets must reside in a region, right? So you need to choose a region. I have selected the US East Northern Virginia region, right? Um, this is because this is my nearest location. You need to choose a location that is nearest to your location. Okay, the key point is that your buckets are not global, but they are created and live only in one region. Okay, so you need to choose a region here nearest to your location. Okay, now if you come down, object ownership is disabled, which is fine. Okay, we will block all public access to this bucket. Bucket versioning is fine. It is disabled. Okay. The default encryption is fine. And let me click on this button and let me create this bucket. Okay, now, as you can notice, this bucket has been successfully created. And here is my bucket. Okay, if I click on these properties, right, I can see that the bucket has been created. This is an object resource indicator and the creation date. The region is the US East Northern Virginia region. Okay, now come back to the object. Now we will upload one file and you can see the destination. The file we will upload will go into this folder. Click add files, select logo.png. Okay. And it is uploading. Now this has been uploaded. Let's click on the close button, okay? Now I'm back into my bucket, okay? And I can see that this file has been uploaded under the object, okay? And what I can do is click on this, right? And get more details about this file. I can see its size and its type here, right? And I can also see that object's URL. Now, how can we open this file that we just uploaded? Uh, 
this is the file that I uploaded. Okay, let's try to open this file that we uploaded, right? There are two ways I can do it. I can either click here or just copy this URL here. Okay, let me first try from here. Let me click on open. Okay. This is the file I uploaded. Okay, and now let me copy this URL and open a new tab here but I'm getting this access denied. If you notice here, I can view the URL and the object that I uploaded here. I'm getting the error message, access denied. So why is it? What is happening this way? Okay, so the reason is that URL here, right? This guy, if you look at the beginning of both of them, this one and the other one, the beginning of both of them are the same. Right, up to here, this one and for the other one, right? The beginning is the same for both of them. However, for this one, the rest of the URL is very complicated, right? Long one. And what is this? This one is a pre-signed URL. And what is it? By default, all Amazon S3 objects are private. Only the object owner can access them. However, the object owner may share objects with others by creating a pre-signed URL. A pre-signed URL uses security credentials to grant time-limited permission to download objects. That being said, it includes the signature that verifies that I am making the request. Therefore, it has my credentials in it, right? Since I uploaded this object, AWS S3 has allowed me to view it. It includes my signature in this pre-signed URL. However, this other URL is a very general public URL. And since public access is blocked on this bucket, it does not allow us to view the object through this URL, right? Let's go back again to this bucket. Now, what will we do? So this is my bucket. Now, let me create one folder here. Let me create this folder, images, okay? And inside this folder, let me upload one object. Let me upload this file. Right, click on upload. Come to the bucket. So now I have the images folder and under the images folder, I have this object, right? So I can do the same thing I can open here. I can see that I have uploaded this object, right? And if I come here, if I try to view using this URL, It won't allow me because again, the same idea that public access is blocked on this object. So it won't allow me, right? Let's see how to delete it. I can go to these images and delete this folder entirely if I want to. Right, this will delete the entire folder let me do this thing. Let me try to delete this folder. Let me select this and say delete, right? And I can copy this permanently delete and paste it here, okay? This will delete the entire folder. Let me close this so you can see that, that the folder is gone, okay? That's it for this lecture. Here we have seen how to create a bucket and upload objects into a bucket. And then we saw how to view them in different ways, right? We also saw how to create folders, delete folders, and so on, right? I hope you got a very good understanding of S3 buckets. I will see you in the next lecture.